Good morning, students. Welcome you today to the my lecture. Appreciate you being here. Uh, we would appreciate it if you would uh, uh, turn off your electronic devices so that uh, we can give our speaker uh, the proper attention. And uh, again, remind you there are some places for anyone interested in coming to uh, lunch today after the after the lecture. Uh, we are very fortunate to have with us uh, some great people from Harmons. And uh, first and foremost is Mr. Bob Harmon, who is the Vice President for Customer uh, Services at, at Harmons. Along with him is Mr. Keith Anderson, who is Vice President of Marketing, and Kelly Howe, who is a marketing specialist with, uh, with Harmons. And I appreciate them being here. <clears throat> Just some information about Bob. He, uh, basically has grown up uh, in a grocery business family. Uh, he's the son of Terry and Doreen uh, Harmon, grandson of Jake and Irene Harmon, who are the founders of Harmon's, and uh, he's a third generation family owner of the business. While well, Jake and Terry thought that it was important that children learn to and work their way through the various departments and levels to develop their understanding of proficiency in uh, all aspects of the business. From a young age, Bob worked hands-on throughout the stores, uh, deepening his skill sets. His invaluable experience provided the base of knowledge he draws from today. Bob then became a corporate buyer for the hardware and drug departments and eventually produce meat bakery deli departments. Followed by Vice President of Marketing and Advertising is currently Vice President for the customer. That's an interesting title. I have never seen that before, um, and I'm sure Bob's going to tell us a little bit about that because I think it's one of the secrets to their success. Again, it's vice president for the customer, uh, obviously an uh, in-store advocate for we who, who go there. Bob is an active board member for several groups. He serves as a board of trustee of Harmon's, the board trustee of uh, Utah Food Industry Association, and board chair of the Utah Southern Idaho chapter of the National Multiple Sclerosis Society. His wife, uh, LJ, and he are uh, parents of five children, uh, four of whom are currently working their way through the grocery business and being the odds of a fourth generation family owned business. Please welcome Mr. Bob Harmon. Sorry, I probably don't even need this, but you, you need to have this on. It'd be, it'd sound better with it on. Okay. Good afternoon. How's everybody doing? Good. Good. All right. I'm going to try to keep this lively and not make this a snoozer for you. Let's see if this is working. Okay. Oh, you might. Did you, did you have to turn this a little bit? It may be turned off now. Yeah. Push harder. All right, I'm on. Well, it's great to be here uh, representing Harmons. Uh, for those of you who haven't worked in the grocery industry, hopefully I can share some uh, great insights on our industry as well as um, talk a little bit about uh, our history, um, some of the innovation and change that has taken place really more recently in our company, and uh, just kind of give you some insights on being a privately held independent company. So with that, we'll begin. We're going to start off with a little historical uh, background. Sorry if I have to look this way. Um, so in 1932, uh, my grandfather right here, Jay Carmen and Irene, my grandmother, uh, this is right out of the Depression, they started a small little fruit stand. What you see here, see here in the picture actually uh, represents a little bit more of the development of that fruit stand. But it literally was just a small little fruit stand on the corner. Um, they worked uh, in tandem. Uh, they tried to keep it open um, all the hours of the day, basically, to serve the community and the neighborhood uh, to try to make a living. And uh, they did so and prospered for many, many years. They uh, actually slept in the back of this. I don't know what I did. Hello? Here, I'm going to. 
So anyway, uh, they lived actually in the back of this uh, small facility, but as the uh, customers uh, acquired, wanted new products, uh, canned goods, fresh meats. Um, here's another one. Okay. No worries. That's okay. Oh, I can tell this is on. Okay. This was on 33rd South and Main. Uh, so we are a 78 year old company. <coughs> Uh, as uh, stated, I am third generation. Uh, I do have a brother and a sister who's also uh, involved in different capacities uh, in the business. Um, so they prospered here for uh, several years, um, building, growing, adding on, and doing everything they could to uh, stay in business. However, in 1940, uh, there was a truck, semi truck, lost its brakes, ran through the back of the facility, and basically took the whole roof down. And, uh, completely destroyed the, the building, uh, which was extremely unfortunate. Um, it was quite devastating to them because that really they put everything that they had into this location. Um, from that point, though, they took they took a little bit of time off, and for the next five years, uh, they actually, as being uh, entrepreneurial in spirit, they decided to go and open up a cafe and uh, do some restauranteering uh, for a little while down in Salt Lake uh, Produce Market in Salt Lake. And uh, that's what they did, scraping up uh, money and, and what uh, monies that they were able to, uh, to keep uh, from this tragedy. And uh, invested in a piece of land out in uh, West Valley, Utah. It used to be Granger, and now formerly West Valley, uh, on 3,500 South and 4,000 West. So they built this brand new modern market of the day. Uh, at the time, this had everything. Uh, this was the... Uh, apex of uh, the food industry, and, and I, the pictures just still give me a, a bit of a chuckle. Um, but uh, that's Jake there. Um, he was uh, he was a, a gentleman that basically didn't stop at anything. He uh, um, he would try almost anything to uh, provide a new uh, type of quality or service to the, the community um, as they asked for it. So he expanded on this store several times. Um, through the next 26 years. He added uh, all kinds of different amenities. He sold everything from Levi's to women's skirts, shoes, um, weapons, uh, rifles, ammo, um, you name it, it was being sold at this particular store. And, and out in that area at the time, it was very rural. And uh, basically it was farmland, dry farms, dairy. Uh, so people were driving from literally from Tooele, our city area from Ogden uh, down down to the store at the time um, because of some of the uh, innovative things that he was doing. Well, that went on successfully and they grew for the next 26 years. Um, and in 71, there was a fire that broke out. Um, uh, it was uh, a fire arson, um, or excuse me, it was a, a robbery arson incident. and. Uh, Unfortunately for the store, there was, uh, they had some large containers of oil and actually some diesel and gasoline uh, containers that were, were just uh, east of the store, but not too far away, but far enough away. It wasn't on the property site. But because of the uh, blaze on this thing and, and how uh, tremendous the fire was, they concentrated all their efforts on one side of the store and uh, because obviously we're going to protect the neighbors and, and lives of, of everyone. So, it pretty much had to just contain the fire and let the whole thing burn to the ground, which occurred. So, another chapter. Well, through perseverance and uh, dedication, basically, uh, the family talked uh, about this and uh, said, you know what, we enjoy this business, we have had success, so we would like to continue this. Um, so my, my father, uh, Terry Harmon, this is my mom, Doreen, and uh, Jake and Irene, they basically traveled and visited uh, many of the uh, best operators of the day. Uh, some that they met through uh, shared groups and partnerships and decided to go back and find out the latest and an innovative grocery retailing and also fixtures and um, services that they could provide. So they toured around, they came back, and they built, really at the time, one of the most state-of-the-art and uh, latest Superstores or a shopping center. It wasn't uh, the humble beginnings. Now we were actually were into uh, quite a bit of multiple services, delicatessen, bakery, fresh meats, produce, and every, and all the offerings. And this this was very successful for many many years. Um, and right now I'd like to just talk about the timeline. 
So basically, perseverance and uh, dedication don't give up. I think that that's something that uh, holds true for them and, and, and for us today. This little bit of the timeline for our stores. So the original store was built uh, in 71. Um, we actually have two, two major remodels and have two grand reopenings, 92, 2010. And then we built in 75 our east location. It was also relocated uh, in 98. Uh, our Ogden store came on in 77, and then our Brickyard store in 78. Uh, these are all located down in the Salt Lake, uh, Salt Lake Valley. Um, Taylorsville uh, was in, uh, come on board in 82, and in uh, 84 we picked up a real small market. It was called the Dove Store in St. George, Utah, um, which was a real small market. Then when we had the opportunity, we rebuilt a new store in 96. Then we added in 84 our Roy Store. <coughs> Uh, just up in this area. Our Cougar store, which is out uh, west, West Valley. Orem store in 98, South Jordan 2001. <clears throat> then, a part of our uh, restructuring and, and rethinking about our business, we actually acquired and purchased a uh, floral distribution center. Uh, we were buying uh, flowers third party and second party, and the freshness and quality that we were providing to the consumer was, was less than average. Uh, it was fine uh, for the time because that's the resources before, that's all we had. But we knew we could take this on ourselves, actually educate our um, associates, and actually become designers and experts in this field. So we have a floral distribution. All of our flowers go through our floral distribution. We buy direct from growers um, throughout the states and um, distribute those not only direct from this distribution to home, um, but also through our stores. And then uh, we built our store in Draper in 2003. And a district in 2006, and then our latest store is Vanier Crossing in 2008. What we're really excited about is uh, coming soon, <clears throat> we have three locations, and we've been talking about this earlier, um, that are actually all underway. The immigration market is a, uh, uh, one of the longest running markets uh, in Salt Lake. I think it had run uh, continuously for about 50 years. Um, it went out of business, uh, the property became available to us, and so we purchased it. And it's only 10,000 square feet. It's a very little store. But it's right in the middle of a wonderful community, and uh, we're just really passionately excited about uh, the opportunities that we're going to bring in. We're going to try to, we're going to try, try to take about a 70,000 square foot idea and squeeze it into one, cent, one seventh of the size. And I think we've been able to, we've, you know, we've traveled around and looked at some of the top retailers uh, on the West Coast, the East Coast, and then West that have been uh, urban markets and, and run some very great uh, stores. And we found uh, equipment, uh, technology, and spacing that we should be able to do a lot of what we're doing today and, and able to actually round out a full basket in that store, although we will have all the sizes and all the menus. Uh, Farmington Station, very exciting. It's uh, just down the road from here. Uh, this is just west of Lagoon um, on the west side of I-15. By Legacy Highway, all of the all of the intersections kind of meet there. You have Legacy Highway I-15, uh, 89. Uh, this is a wonderful lifestyle center that's going to be developed there. They'll have um, all kinds of uh, very unique restaurants, uh, boutiques, uh, great uh, clothiers, hardware stores, uh, multiplex theater. It, it, they're, they're really trying to rival a gateway-esque concept. And, and this particular group is going to be able to pull this off. Um, so that's, that's extremely exciting. That's being built as we speak in the uh, Walton Meeting uh, 2011. And then our downtown store, uh, very excited about this. So this will be the first uh, true downtown, right downtown Salt Lake, um, full operation uh, grocery retailer. Um, we're excited about this. We've been working on this for now uh, five years um, in the process. And uh, it's the cranes are up and the bricks are going up. and. This is going to be exciting. There will be parking on the top of the store. Uh, there will be uh, a two-level store. You'll enter from one side because the elevation change into a mezzanine, bistro, coffee. Um, and then you'll walk down into the store. And that will be the, the main shopping mezzanine. And we're just uh, couldn't be more thrilled and excited. I can tell you more, but I don't really have that kind of time. So I can talk all day about Google Passion. So, Harmon's mission to value associates and exceed customers' expectations or vision, be remarkable. I think that, you know, be remarkable. Just don't be okay, great, good, whatever. Be remarkable. 
Uh, people will be disappointed shopping anywhere else. And our values, integrity, community, traditions, innovation, and quality. You know, my dad would always say, we're in the people business, we just happen to sell groceries. And uh, dad really had a unique ability to understand the characteristics of leadership and uh, the people that really make a difference. Um, he used that knowledge to surround himself with incredibly talented people. Uh, they, uh, he knew his, uh, his abilities and his limitations, and so he, he chose those who could uh, really get us beyond uh, what we understood today, and uh, we continue that today. Uh, this quote, uh, so he knew the key success, uh, having the right people in the right scene on the bus. It represents leadership. Uh, that really is from a book that, you know, if you guys would like, uh, Good to Great, um, by John Collins. Um, <clears throat> it's a great read. He's written a few other business books, but it really talks about the, the concept of business and, and what you really need to think about uh, in order to succeed. It's all about uh, the people that are uh, individual talents and strengths. Okay, family-owned business. I want to talk a little bit about this. So considering a family-owned uh, company for a career, well, you might want to use a little bit of caution. How many have, uh, how many, how many know about family business and work in family businesses so far? Okay, a few of you. Well, you know, families alone can be a little messy. Great, wonderful, loving, kind, generous. Uh, but you mix that with business and it kind of changes things a little bit, or in a lot of cases, a lot. So anyway, uh, statistics show 65% uh, of second generation and 90% third generation businesses fail. We're part of the 10, yay! We're, we're among the 10%. Uh, that's by design. And it's because we we actually, uh, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about this right now, is that, you know, even being a family-owned business, our organizational chart is very different than most family-owned companies. Mom's still chairman, chairwoman, chair of the board. Uh, however, our president, our chief executive officer, our executive vice president, uh, chief operating officer, and our CFO are all non-family members as well as other vice presidents. We do this by design. It's very important to have um, the intellectual differences in knowledge and uh, uh, to, really, to really help you keep fresh, to keep things um, uh, progressing in your company for the future in terms of leadership, uh, guidance, focus, and those kinds of things. Some people have outside boards help to do that. We actually have just a very strong internal uh, operating team that, that really provides us. I'm going to put on my glasses because you know I'm getting a little older now. Um, and I'd like to read this. Uh, this kind of represents a little bit about what we're talking about. This is uh, Alan Mullaly. Uh, he was the CEO of Ford Motor Company. So Mullaly is, and this was an article in the Business Week uh, a little while ago. How long ago was it? About a year ago, Pete? OK. So Mullaly is uh, living proof that a single extraordinary leader with vision and determination really can make all the difference in an organization. When heads of the D Detroit Big Three GM, Ford, and Chrysler appeared in the Capitol Hill bailout hearings, many lawmakers and many Americans decided that this trio from this industry, Heartland, uh, could all be part with the same bad CEO brush. There was a telling moment during the discussion when executive compensation, when the three CEOs were asked if they were willing to work for only one dollar. Mullally's polite reply was, I think I'm okay where I am. Well, that was a juicy little tidbit, and the national media jumped all over it. Uh, uh, were as one in their downright contempt for uh, these three men. And do you guys all remember the time I'm talking about? This was a few years ago, and, and you know the the bailouts and the every you know the whole financial collapse. We were all pretty sensitive. And I, I I remember that pretty clearly myself. Well, uh, even. Even this says even Stacy and then said Anderson Cooper literally sneered in disgust. Well, Alan Mullaly was and is worth every Ford, whatever Ford is paying him, because he, he has almost single-handedly saved the automaker. The Ford Motor Company, unlike its two Detroit rivals, has not declared bankruptcy, has not dipped into the hands into the tarp trough. In fact, Mullaly took a 30% pay cut and declared that he would indeed reduce the salary to a dollar per year if Ford took government funds. I'll do, I'll do well when Ford does well. Um, Ford stands alone as the sole big three automaker that is still an independent entity 
for this achievement and for the steering uh, Ford into um, a clearly defined road towards success. Alan uh, Mullaly is Automotive Magazine's 2010 Man of the Year. So it kind of tells you about uh, making sure that you have uh, the right leadership and the right role to do to have a successful uh, future in business. Okay, I want to talk a little bit about how passionate we are about supporting local. Uh, we support hundreds of local businesses. Uh, this just represents a few. Uh, financial, we have you know American Credit Union uh, within our establishments. Uh, we even have a, a local uh, auditor firm instead of a national firm. Our construction that we do all our buildings remodels um, are through local uh, construction firms and also their subs. Uh, farming, this represents just a few that we uh, purchased from 27 different uh, family farmsteads. Uh, Schmidt Produce, uh, Sterling uh, Fruit and Company, Vernon Stratton Farms, Manny, and so on and so forth. Uh, you can also see that uh, our manufacturers, uh, we really support local manufacturers and have had for many, many years. Beehive Cheese Company, Criminelli, uh, which is a tremendously high uh, quality sausage and, and uh, sausage maker. Lehigh Roller Mills, Winter Dairy. Frito Lay, who has a plant out in West Valley, Multimill has a plant up north, Miller Honey, and so on and so forth. We also uh, purchase all of our uh, groceries from Associated Foods, uh, which is a local wholesaler. It's very important to us to do that. It helps sustain our economy, keeps it, uh, uh, it keeps the, the engine running. Okay, I want to throw up a few current stats. You are business uh, associates uh, after all, and uh, market share. We have 11% along the Wasatch Fund. Uh, this is representative of Utah County North to uh, about uh, South Ogden. Uh, encompasses 11 of our stores and competing against 112 competitors. Um, it's a very uh, competitive market, as you can see. Uh, our annual sales is 430 million dollars. Uh, number of associates we employ today is 2,400. Our payroll and benefit costs uh, are around 30, 30, or, pardon me, 63 million annually. Um, Okay, I want to talk a little bit about um, being independent. Uh, this big freighter over here represents the national, global groups that we compete against. Uh, some of the big, the big hitters out there. Um, you know, they they're strong and mighty. They they can do a lot of a lot of things. Uh, but being independent and in a privately held company allows us to respond quickly and be nimble, uh, whether it's pressures from the competition or economic change. Uh, you know, the other thing that I wanted to just talk about on that is that, you know, we're not burdened by uh, pressures from outside shareholders uh, whose only motivation really is, is my stock going up or is my stock going down. They don't really understand the business. They are not in uh, the market to understand what changes uh, they have to make. Um, it allows us to have some uh, actual, some, some real advantages um, because if we have to move, we can move. Um, this is represented by this wonderful little speedboat. Um, we can, we're far more nimble. Uh, if we have to make a change today, uh, even if it's going to cost us a little more deeply than uh, others might be willing to spend, we can do that. And it's not going to be something that, that uh, is broadcast or represented or, or shareholders being concerned about it. We, we can make those changes. Uh, reinvestment in, at a very high rate is another thing that I think is extremely important. Um, this is, we, we, I'm going to show you a slide about this, but we actually reinvest at a higher rate than even most other independents uh, that we found. But it's also in our people programs, facilities, uh, and even during this uh, current recession, we haven't lost any, any uh, real layoffs or, or jobs. That says a lot to the strength of our company. Okay, uh, so basically how much uh, have we earned? 430 million annually, how much uh, can you keep? Uh, our industry, uh, about 1% is the net profit. Uh, if you're really cooking along, you might get up around a 2%, but that's pretty atypical. Uh, well, how much does Harmons reinvest? 100% of that. Uh, earnings go back into our business uh, for a long-term future. I'm going to show you a, a slide here quickly about what really kind of that represents. So here's our history of capital investment uh, from 2003 to actually going into next year. Um, I'm not going to go through each one, but you can see how much um, we reinvested back into the company, which represents $76 million. Uh, I can just tell you that's a lot of groceries. Um, the, way, the way you do that, you can laugh. You guys are awfully quiet. <laughs> Making me nervous up here. But uh, 
basically, some people might say, well, how can you do that? Well, the family doesn't take dividends. Um, we are supported based on the success, just kind of like Alan Mullaly says, if the company is strong, we're strong. And we can actually do that. Uh, we have to put back in order to grow and act, in, in order to acquire talent, in order to achieve the things that we are doing today. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that now. Uh, innovation. So we discovered uh, new talent process and equipment to create unique signature products. And uh, hopefully, if you haven't stopped doing Harmons, do so. Um, I'd encourage that. Our people became experts through training and education. In the last two years alone, uh, we've updated, remodeled, or expanded four of our locations. That's, that's progressive for a small company like ours. Uh, the, with the three new stores being built, this will create 500 additional jobs, and we hope to, that those jobs will actually be careers. That's something that I want to talk to you a little bit about, is that you might think of the grocery industry as being you know, a great little job to get some skills, maybe get some income while I'm going to school, um, do what you're doing, which is true. It's a, it's a great little uh, way to get some training and some talent. Um, or, or some basis of uh, knowledge about the business. However, today we actually have people, we have uh, right now currently over um, 230, no, 250 associates or 10 years or more in our business. We also have over uh, 50 that have, well, yeah, 50 that have over 30 years uh, with Harmons. And that's pretty incredible uh, based on uh, the amount of employment that we have. Okay, so without reinvesting, uh, we wouldn't be where we are today. Okay, I want to talk a little bit about, you know, if you're going to be entrepreneurial, if that's your pursuit, if you're going to be a uh, self-employed uh, individual, or if you're going to work for a great uh, established firm, either way, hopefully, some of these points will, will uh, be helpful. You know, I think what you should do when you're out there is I think you need to interview the company before they interview you. I think you need to find out and understand the leadership, their focus, and their goals of where they're really going. Um, don't go in cold and just sit down and, and present your piece of your knowledge and understanding. I check them out first. Talk to a couple of people currently employed with them. Uh, get their perspective on the culture and how things really are in the company. They'll tell you. And I think that that's, you know, I, some of you are probably, oh yeah, we're going to do this for sure, but I, I think some people may not think about that as well. Salary is only one component. It's a very important component. It pays the bills. It needs to be adequate to uh, sustain the lifestyle that you would like. But I want you to be thinking about a couple of things. Health insurance. You know, I would be darn sure that, that they have a great health insurance package for you. Um, because it is it is all over the board. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a whole perspective of what one offers to another. Um, do they offer a health savings account? which is something that we've just added just recently. This is, this is portable. This is something that you invest into and you can take it with you. It doesn't stay there. It doesn't, uh, you don't have to give it back. It's a part of your, uh, it's part of your income. Uh, do they have a wellness program to help support that? Um, in our case, we have a wellness program. If people uh, join, they can actually offset a couple of, uh, some of their premium payment towards their portion of health insurance. Um, for us, it makes perfect sense. Does it have a 401k? You know, do they have a 401k program, a retirement program? Um, and what and what does that involve? And, and how broad? And how much how much control do you have of that? Uh, do they offer other benefits like incentives? You know, periodic incentives, bonuses, or the bonuses attached to the salary option? And do they offer community education outside of the employment? Uh, does, you know, do the company's values and goals align with yours? I think that's critically important. Uh, you know, if you're passionate about the environment and sustainability, you might want to find out how your company feels about that and what they're actually involved in or, or doing in that um, realm. You know, maybe it's uh, it's giving back uh, through charity or community works, um, and if you have passion for that, and what is that business doing in regard to that? What about continuing education? And what I mean by that is is internal. You know, are they uh, allowing you classes, courses, um, updates on uh, continuing education? Are they innovative and are they willing to change? I think that's, that's critically important. You want to be with a vibrant, moving business. No, I wouldn't. Um, this just shows you a couple of things that we're doing today. We're, we're very passionate about uh, our carbon footprint. We, we're trying to do all the right things. We have a long ways to go. but. Uh, 
We are, you know, a part of uh, the Recycling Coalition of Utah. We've started a couple of initiatives uh, internally with um, uh, waste, uh, our waste stream, especially with composting and things like that. Um, that really wasn't a part of uh, what was available. Uh, we are passionate about giving back to charitable organizations, a couple represented uh, MS, Special Olympics. We uh, initiated a branding program with the schools called Teach the Taste. Um, instead of going in and just doing classroom work with the teachers, we actually uh, teach children about how to eat healthy foods, give them the opportunity to smell it, taste it, enjoy that. Um, and that's just been hugely successful. We have leadership classes. I just did one on the shark on there because it's just a cool shot. You can see that. Um, okay. So, is there a curb path? If so, what is it? I think that's important to know. I, this is an example. This is uh, our president and CEO, Dean Peterson, started working for Herman's uh, Stocking Groceries at night, basically. Uh, our executive vice president, chief operating officer, Mark Jensen, started as a meat counter associate. Um, Frank Lundquist, our Vice President Director of Store Development, started in the Grocery Department, and, our, and Lori McFarland, our Vice President of Sales, started as a batter. So I can tell you that there is a career um, in, in our industry, and, and we develop, and there's more examples of this, but that's kind of <coughs> at the high end. So a career is a large part of your life, so make sure it will be something you enjoy, you're proud of the company, and the people you work with. If you're self-employed, do all that too. Uh, knowledge is power. So you've got different avenues to learn from in addition to school or books. I think this is important. You're, you guys are getting all the technical knowledge, you know, the basis of what, what you need to, to go out and, and, and enter into the workforce. Well, when you get out there, then you're going to have the application. Um, I think the application side is definitely, there's differences. And uh, some, some ways that I recommend that you uh, go is, you know, if, if there's shared groups um, or opportunities to share the same uh, business that you're in. We belong to two, uh, one's existed since 1933, representing uh, independents throughout the state. So uh, this is a long time, long term organization. It's, it, is, it has had some of the best operators in our industry that have come, gone, sold, merged. Um, but we continually, uh, this particular group continually replenishes. So each state has at least one representative. The large states like California, Texas, and so forth have multiple non-competitive uh, members. There's also another group that we belong to of life operators in, in similar formats, focused on best practices, making them uh, the best performers in our industry. Um, what I recommend is, uh, you know, the best part that we've gleaned from this is the successes that we've had for sharing uh, our success and failures. You know, we talk about everything from, you know, I spent two million dollars on this or a hundred, couple hundred thousand on this new project or program implemented it, we tried to make this work, and it failed. So, you know, it's, it's a great opportunity to share information about something that maybe isn't something that it appears to be, or how to actually make something work. We also talked about things like uh, generational, uh, because of the family operators, talk about, uh, you know, what do you do with the state plan? How do you care for the opportunities for the future generations to retain this business? You know. Do you do uh, generation skipping on, on some of your, on some of, on some of that? We basically pull in, but, but the only thing I want to really point out is, is the failures. I think it's more important to share failures than success, um, because you can really learn from that. And this just represents, you know, buy a ticket, grab a plane, and, and travel, and, and find, find this out for yourself. Uh, we do send people to different parts of the country and the world, and this just represents a few. This is Robert Signaler, he's our produce buyer. Uh, this is Chris Smith, he's our meat buyer. Uh, we've sent people down uh, South America to look at a floral, we talked about that earlier with uh, our floral distribution. Uh, experience things, you know. Um, we took 40 different people to um, Italy um, to experience uh, fine pastas. Uh, understand what gelato was, what it really meant to to have uh, uh, the fine breads. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about in the future. We've also sent people to San Francisco to really understand what great bread is all about. And not to teach you, but these bags have got a great, well, it's a mini baguette. And um, we're going to let you guys take home and try it. We're pretty proud of our bread. Uh, make sure you explore. You know, even within the same organization that you're within, 
try to take advantage of opportunities outside of that knowledge and, and uh, you know, participate in something that you don't know. Um, I think you might find for yourself that there might be something that uh, you want to switch your direction with and maybe take a new path. So I uh, get out, travel experiences for me, I'll let you know my experience has shown that I know very little. And that's just the truth. Every time I go out, I find out that I thought I had a pretty good idea of how this worked, but you get out and actually see what's underneath that, um, what it takes to make that happen, and your knowledge just expands. Uh, we take our people across the nation, I talked about that, into other countries pursuing knowledge, better understanding. In every case, a person has, um, has grown. Barriers will or perceived or diminished. I want to talk about fear a little bit. Fear mobilizes. You think, well, no, I'm, I'm not fearful. I've got, you know, I've got all the knowledge I need. I'm going to go out there and I'm just going to rock this world. And I think that that's the exact attitude that you need to take. But I think what happens sometimes is people stop a little bit. And some, some of that has to do, do with the fact of uh, the unknown. They just don't know. They, they haven't experienced it, so they don't really know what that's going to do or where or, or that's going to take them. And I think that that can stop you. I also think fear of failure. I think people won't do things because they're just, you know, they're so, I'm going to win and I'm going to be the best. If I can't do that, I'm not going to do it. And I just challenge that a little bit because I think what you need to do is you need to try it. You need to experience. You need to see what that means um, for yourself. So don't let fear stop you. Okay. Um, being the best at always getting better. I'm going to lose all my papers here in a second. So being the best all, always getting better. Ten years ago, we had a critical, uh, it was a critical time in our industry. Uh, there was many mergers, uh, buyouts, sellouts. Um, basically, our industry was just changing. Um, so it's either uh, change or get out. What, uh, what had been successful in the past really wasn't relevant today. And we had many, many, many years of success prior to this. Well, we made a very uh, decisive decision to differentiate ourselves and give Utah shoppers a new experience. Not something that could be seen or available uh, in our competitors. This is a 180 degree turn um, as we uh, entered into reinventing our company. Uh, when many companies fell, their industry has changed and they don't. And that's kind of what happens. And there was a lot of, uh, personally I knew of about 10 uh, family-owned businesses that had quite a bit of success in the future that just didn't make it uh, during this uh, period. And they're, you know, they're off doing something else now, which is wonderful, but uh, I really hated to see them have to make that decision. But some of it was they just felt to recognize that they needed to change. Uh, we continue to travel the country uh, a couple times a year, even uh, currently. Uh, we find that we go to the best retailers and we meet and evaluate how we're going to change, not if we should change, but how we're going to change. Uh, we found that what works today is not what will work tomorrow. Okay, uh, being the best always. I didn't point this out, and I'd like just to point this out now, is that I think if you say you're the best, you're done. And I, and we kind of got that way a bit ourselves. We thought, well, we have the best <coughs> products or the best uh, needs or the best things. And when you do that, you kind of set yourself up that you're not going to ever think <coughs> beyond it. And we were kind of there for quite some time. Well, now what we say is being the best is always getting better because you can always improve um, continuously. So from the top to the bottom, we had a, a really a, a Big realignment with our uh, leadership roles, uh, which was no small change, and it was a process that took us over at least a year of planning, starting back to 2003, and it's still ongoing today, um, and ever changing. We had a 25%. This is I'm really proud of this, but we had a 25% more associates into our existing stores, uh, which represented about 430 jobs, um, from being a traditional grocer to one that produces our own fresh products. Um, I'm going to example that here uh, in this moment. Uh, we changed from being a grocer that had low laborers uh, to one that had experts in all the area. We um, run some of the highest laborers in our industry today. We basically, we knew we had to go and find talent. We had to go find people that could help us really make this change. In order to do that, we had to pay them the right wage. Um, and we are. Uh, we had to learn and operate completely different, and uh, it took an entirely different business model in order to do this. Because you know, obviously, if your labors go way up, the costs go up, and your you know your expenses are there, and you have to adjust. So we made a tremendous amount of adjustments. I'd like to uh, show. I just want to see where I'm on time here. Probably okay. All right, cool. I'm about right on time, huh? Roughly. Okay. Uh, so. This, this example is 
kind of this, this huge exploration of, of what we've been doing for the last 10 years. Um, we went out and we found uh, people that were experts. We went uh, to visit them in their states. We actually uh, became educated um, within those, and these are some of the items that uh, we've been able to produce. Artisan bread. Uh, this is very high quality, local, healthy ingredients. So we, we sent our uh, bakers at the time to the San Francisco Baking Institute um, to become artisan bakers. Um, and now they're certified artisan bakers. Um, and now they understand the art and science of handmade baked bread. Uh, all of our ingredients are local in this bread, which is very important to us. Um, we get our flour from the high roller mills. The wheat actually comes from a couple of family farms. Um, me and Keith actually went and visited my okay. um, and it, One had, I think, 4,000 acres, and another one had, I think, maybe 6,000 acres. But he went organic, and that was what was important, because Lehigh did not have an organic uh, wheat at the time. We also used uh, local Redmond real salt. This is the mine salt from the Great Lake uh, Bonneville, um, which is an amazing salt if you've ever tried it. And minimal ingredients. Um, everything is organic. We have an organic certification on our bread today. Um, that's the raisins, the pecans, the, everything that's in that is uh, certified. Cheese from around the world. We did take, as I mentioned before, uh, 40 different individuals on an Italy connoisseur tour. We didn't go to the beaches in Venice and, you know, and all of those things, which is nice, which is for sure nice, but we actually went to, to the interior of Italy and northern Italy where great food was really, where it's really come from. Um, we visited Bologna, Parma, Modena, and Turin. Uh, so we discovered balsamic vinegar, and the pastas, olive oils, gelato, fine cheeses, handcrafted salamis, prosciutto, and much more. This individual right here, this is a family owner. This is a, the owner of the Parmigiano Reggiano. And we actually buy, these are 80 pound wheels. If you can imagine this, these are 80 pound wheels. They have to turn them once a week in order to have them ripen accordingly and get the air to them and so on and so forth. But we actually are buying and sell today from this family uh, cheesemaker from Italy, and we know because it's the stamp that's on its 2153. Anyway, I think it's like 2153, but we know that this family, and I was going to pronounce his name, but it's, it's, it's Luca. It's Luca, let me find it here. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. I can show that later or whatever. But um, wonderful guy. Uh, his family's been doing this for several generations, and he just makes it a fantastic uh, product. Same with the uh, prosciutto, and we've also sound, found some other uh, great cheeses and pastas um, in, in this discovery. And we offer these in the store today. Uh, delicatessen, not deli. The reason I say uh, not deli is because we used to have delis, and that was kind of like, you know, the hoagie sandwich, the salads out of a box or a bag, the, the frozen, almost fresh kind of stuff going in. That's what we had, and, and that was very common for the industry. I'm not putting anyone down. It was really kind of very common. Uh, well, we are now a delicatessen, and, and what that is is fine, high-quality foods made by experts in the field. Um, of knowledge of, of what they're preparing. So we have chefs now, we have sous chefs, we have artisans. Um, they use healthy, high fresh quality ingredients. Uh, we've, uh, we have chef prepared meals, uh, more than 30 varieties of entrees and salads. We have a carving station with prime rib, uh, espresso rub tri-tip, uh, daily specials, roasted, uh, uh, roasted vegetables, and um, we have uh, hand cuts uh, and handmade salad bars. All of our dressings that we make are, are scratch uh, from the chefs. We have fresh made hot soups and so on. Um, and we also have uh, fresh prepared sushi. This is Bob Ryan. He's our, uh, our chef. And he also runs our culinary education center at uh, our store in Vayner Crossing, which is another uh, innovative thing that we've brought. Uh, fresh cut fruit and veg veggies, um, hand selected, peak of the ripeness. We used to buy all of this externally. We used to have some plant, some commissary, manufacture, cut it, pack it, ship it, and then bring it to us. And, and you can tell the difference, I always tell people, because you're going to get about 50% of the containers going to have the liquid that expelled from the fruit in the bottom, and then you're going to have the fruit. Well, that should be in the fruit, not under the fruit. 
And anyway, when you when you shop us, you're going to find it, it's all within the freezer. You're going to have very little of anything that's, that's come out. Uh, we also make a homemade fresh salsa, uh, bruschetta, and guacamole. And and I don't know, some people say that again. Did you say bruschetta? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, because a lot of people we say no, that's bruschetta, but it's bruschetta. Um, all natural high quality ingredients and uh, prepared chef and sort. That was a big, big part of that is that we have to become uh, very health conscious and food safety, and we have all that in practice. In fact, we have a food safety director. <clears throat> Fresh hand carved meats. Uh, we employ uh, highly trained butchers who provide high quality uh, cuts of meat. A couple of things here quickly is we used to buy all of our chicken used to come uh, externally. It was already pre-packaged, pre-bagged, pre-weighed, pre and pre-pumped. Uh, full of solutions, sodiums, and so forth. Well, we said that is not healthy, that is not the way to go to business. So now we hand cut fresh, natural chicken in the store um, at every location today. We also went through our grind program. We have 20 different varieties of brats and sausage. We grind all of our fresh ground beef. We measure it hours, not days. We don't have a best use by date. It's either fresh or it's not. Uh, freshness to us is it's fresh. So uh, dry aged uh, prime. This is something, to, uh, this right here in the picture that I know is probably terrible from where you're sitting, but that's basically a beef humidor. If you can think of a cigar humidor or whatever, but it basically adds uh, humidity and it has the right temperatures. But you're aging that uh, prime beef, that's another, it's prime beef, which is the highest uh, grade. Um, and it's breaking down the, the tissues and, and it, it's the most amazing cut of steak you'll ever have. Uh, we use natural pork and fresh never frozen seafood. Okay, uh, we also had to, with all of our change that had taken place, we had to recreate and redesign an entire new website. Um, and I'd encourage anyone who'd like to go check it out, check it out, we're pretty proud of uh, what we've got going on there. Um, so it was recently launched, Keith had a lot to do with that uh, in terms of the marketing side. Uh, focus on our people was, was one of the uh, big factors that we wanted to showcase. Um, and then also we have all kinds of uh, information provided there, recipes, ads, uh, shopping lists, and, and everything that we're doing. We did uh, hire and have an in-house in web content and communication developer as well. So um, that was a, a big change. We made many, many other changes throughout the store, but I, we don't really have time to get into those. Um, but, um, we went from center store, all fresh areas, the front to back, in uh, basically uh, changing to be a very progressive and, and very viable uh, company. To, um, so, <clears throat> we're in the people business, we just, is that me? That is terrible. <laughs> oh, the timer's done, it's not telling me I'm out of time. All right, I feel better. It's not, all right. Thinking that's, that was rude. Uh, so anyway, uh, one of the new businesses have to sell groceries, great statement. Investing in people, products, and facilities that build a unique shopping experience for the customer. Our associates are passionate about uh, the products we create and services that they provide. They're excited to share this knowledge with our customer. I think that's a very important point is that when you come in, these people are glad to be there. They're knowledgeable about what they have to offer and they're ready to communicate that to you. I, and regardless of your business if you're in, that's the, that's the times when you feel really good about buying tires, clothing, insurance policies. It doesn't really matter. That person's engaged, highly knowledgeable, and understands and has passion about their business. And all these smiling faces on the bottom do represent uh, the majority of uh, our associates, but in this case, it's even a little more special because this actually is uh, fourth generation. Um, we have one that's in our pharmacy technician, we have Marcus Baker, we have a chef who graduated from culinary school, we have a floral designer, and we have a people support uh, person. And then this only represents uh, five of the nine. Um, so they're in the business, learning the business, and where they fall, we're looking forward to someone rising the top, but you know, that's okay too. Um, okay, I think we're at the questions time. We won't do the thank you yet. So, questions? No hard balls. Yes? What did it affect your revenues when I mean, you went from being a low cost, you know, push and discount to being this high quality, 
high labor, um, increase in your, um, your prices? Well, what it did was we had to, you know, we had to, to really look at the total mix of what we were offering them. Uh, we knew that if we were going to add a lot of labor and talent in this area, that we were going to have to blend that mix a little bit, a bit differently throughout. Uh, we were able to do that by actually identifying the areas that we actually could raise a little bit in profitability, and those that we actually needed to lower. We just did a lot more drilling into the information that we actually had. Before it was just kind of lots of volume, pushing up uh, lots at low price, and that just kind of kept the motor running. Uh, now we had to look at it entirely differently. So we, we had to structure our, uh, our financing, the, the roles in, in which uh, the leadership was structured differently as well, to manage those pieces. And you know, we did a lot of, uh, I was talking to John earlier about the fact that we, our IT departments have been extremely um, busy because we, we had to glean out more information than we, than we ever have before. Um, about hourly sales, by class, by item, um, by store, and and really find out where our, our uh, profitability opportunities were and where we're losing money. Yes. And it's up the road. He's asking about the high cheese company. Do you know we um, we actually I think we met Pat uh, and his partner um, at a cheese festival. I think they were actually presenting their their uh, by the way their blue ribbon. They won uh, international and national awards for their cheese. Their their best selling cheese. Their first international blue ribbon cheese was is called Barely Buzzed, and it was a um, they had rubbed it in. Um, espresso coffee. So the outside of the cheese has this dark rind on it, but it has this just totally unique flavor, and, and that was one of the first, and they won several. But yeah, we met them at a, um, a cheese uh, festival or uh, some kind of a shared group opportunity, and that's the first time. We knew that they were here, but I don't think that we really engaged with them because they were very small, and they, were, they wanted to sell to very unique re um, off shops. And they, they didn't want to try to get into big velocity. Um, you know, they wanted to keep control, which I think is very smart for them. Uh, we went to them and said, listen, we want to care for that. We want you to continue to be successful, make great cheese products, and we want to be able to help support that. So we've, we've had a really good partnership that way. Yeah, they're great. They're fun. Another thing is in the grocery business around here, associated with food has Well, it is, but you know what's interesting about that is that our wholesaler has to be healthy, you know. So it's it's a catch twenty. But I think I think the fact that what the way we look at it is instead of focusing our energy on that on that, we need to focus our energy on competing with what we have, no matter who it is, you know. And I think that that's what's uh, helped us prevail is that we we understand that that. Uh, it's going to take a tremendous amount of resource commitment and time in order to make these changes. We have done that now in about 10 years and are gleaning some of the success from that today. Building stores right now is, is unheard of for a small independent. Adding, you know, three new stores and 500 jobs in this climate. And people even ask, you know, what are you guys thinking? Well, we're thinking about some growth. We're thinking about, you know, you know, creating some jobs and, uh, and continuing down in the future. But we were only able to do that by really changing dynamically and, and having something uniquely different to offer. Do you carry Western Family stuff? We do. We do. We carry Western Family. And, and it's a great brand. What is? It's a great brand. Thank you. Uh, oh, can okay. I? Yes. Uh, two parts. Outside of the competitive nature of the grocery business, what's the biggest challenge? And then what do you think is the greatest opportunity I think outside of the groceries and the biggest challenge <laughs> in general, I think that um, right now we're in a pretty challenging time, and not to make this a, a big of a point, but um, this, is a, this is a really different time. I, this hasn't happened for um, since the, the Great Depression. 
but I, but I I'm not going to you know the way I think what we our approach to that is that there's opportunity within it, and I think that that's you know that's what I like to leave with you guys is that within every challenge there is always a great opportunity, and it's how you look at that and it's how you actually because you know steel and construction and land before this hit a few years ago was out. Outrageous. I mean, it was outrageous to build a store. Well, it's not today. If you've got if you've got the wherewithal and the financing and you know the backing, you can actually build a store and, and and it's you know several millions less to do that. So that's what we try to do is we try to take advantage of the opportunities within uh, that challenge. And I'm sorry, the second part was just the greatest opportunity going forward. Greatest opportunity going forward. Um, I would have to say not allowing ourselves to get in the way. Um, I, I, I always like to think of, you know, if we are smart enough to hire uh, talented people with great knowledge and, and drive, real leaders, the best thing we could do is just simply get out of the way, literally, and let them um, uh, have forward focus, envision what we could be in the future, allow them the opportunity to do that. And I think that that's probably our biggest challenge is to continue that. Have you ever thought of expanding outside of Utah? Uh, we haven't yet. We've had actually some opportunities more recently um, into the Colorado kind of that area. But um, we're really content with what we have. And we are small. We have to, you know, we're, we have to be very fiscally responsible. Um, and, and if for the opportunity in time comes, then I think that that will be something we'll, you know, jump in, you know, both feet forward. But um, right now we're not. We, we have lots of opportunity right now. And in fact, we've got, a, a, you know, a couple of pieces of land that are still undeveloped and not being developed today that we're looking forward to. So, yes? You said that the business was built to prevent family problems from getting to interfere with business. Um, how do you keep family members in, interested in the state and the business and continue on with it? Well, I think, I think that, that's a, just a great question. Um, you know, you have this whole Eric parent thing, you know, the oldest, uh, you know, if only one gender or another, whatever those things are. And I think some of that's old, very old uh, thought process. But our biggest thing was actually to identify the strengths within each of the family members individually and actually help collectively promote and pursue that for them because some are very creative and so you know we're, we're trying to steer them and give them education to be creative whether that's designing or chef or or you know those kind of things if, if other people are very more leader like or you know analytical or those kind of things we're actually trying to help steer them and what they're finding what we're finding because collectively we think this way is that it's okay if I'm not this title, but I'm the only one who can do this and, and actually to bring that to the family. And I think that that's when you have success, they are actually having a happier, more fulfilled life. They're not in a position you know, that they may fail or not be able to hold up. And I think that that's just true of any family. You can have those who are going to have more capabilities. And you can have more success that if they do this right here is perfect. And it's the best thing that they can do for the family company. And that's what we try to do. I have a question about uh, city group. Was that something that you were, <coughs> that you came to the church or the, whoever was in charge of that project and you said that we want to be here? Was it they came to you and appreciated it? You know, we were really, that's a great question. Thanks. Um, you know, we, we understood that there was, this project was going to take place many, several years ago, probably just like everyone else. I mean, it was a long time, long term plan. Um, we, we heard that they were looking at having a grocer down there, but we didn't have the opportunity to really approach them um, because they were looking at other national and larger groups initially. And then um, we built our Bangor store back in 2006. Uh, which really showed what we are today and, and how we're going to move forward. Um, and we invited them to come and see, you know, the local grocer and, and see if there might be something that would fit. And they loved it. And they could see that we were being very uh, innovative, um, that we're bringing a whole different um, 
type of product or type of service to the community, and it was something that they felt that would fit. And so it was like, yay! <laughs> we, could, we, we could be more proud to, to you know, have the opportunity, but um, we're just excited about it. We wouldn't have been able to do this if we didn't make uh, the changes that we've made in the last ten, you know, seven to ten years. Uh, we wouldn't be a part of this project. No. Thank you. Okay, I think my time. If, if you'll oblige me. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I miss one? Yeah, sorry. Yeah, sorry. I just have a question. Um, how's the ownership like worked out? Like everybody in the family owns a share of it, I guess. And doesn't that, like, the more kids you have, the more shares you have, and the less everybody has to say? You know, we, this is a topic we could actually talk about for a long time. Because it's, it took us, it took us about three years, yeah, literally three years to really um, go through the thought process of, of really some solid estate planning with my parents. So now it's not just how I feel about it, it's how the owners, Feel about it really my generation and what are we going to do with the kids and what we really came up with um, was the fact that we knew that in order to continue prosperity and have a more of a legacy of continuation we need to be very practical about how the ownership or the real vote you know for uh, for that was held the shares or the family part of it was looked at because we needed to keep, as my dad used to always say, don't choke the goose that's laying the golden eggs. You know, make sure the goose is healthy and you'll prosper by, you know, the eggs is like that. But basically what it means is that we have to still have a very small minority of votes for the leadership role of the family side. Of it. Then the rest have a pro you know, can prosper. So my parents uh, decided that my brother, when, when my mom passes, my dad's already passed, but uh, when mom passes, then, then that's going to go to myself, my brother, my sister. We have our group, so family, and then the, the, the vote is our vote. What we do with our family is up to us individually. Does that make sense? Yeah. So we keep the leadership and the direction of, and the focus of the company solid. And all of this, it can be, all of that, needs to just, you know, take care for it in a different way. Because you can't have everyone just say, hey, let's do this. Because it's just, it's not, it's not feasible, and it's not just, it's not good business. Is that, did that answer your question? Well, kind of, yeah. I was just, so not everybody gets a, is, is every, a Yes, yes, yeah, let me, let me, everyone will, everyone is a part of it. And then, and shares are allocated based on size of families and so on and so forth. So there is that involvement. But when it comes to actually making the decisions, the executive decisions about, you know, where the investments to be, are we going to have growth? Are we going to, you know, do this or that? That's that's a very smaller group that's assigned by family, and so that you don't have that controversial uplift within that. But yes, people are they're all they're all part of it. I got a question. Do you guys get free groceries? You guys no. Get <laughs> no. But you're, you're going to get a free bag of frisbees. I had some frisbees in case she's not at all. And that's going to whip them out at you guys. There, there's one in each one of these. Hey, it's a campus. You guys have like to have some fun. Well, I was going to play, and if I have time, and if you guys don't mind, I was just going to you'll indulge me. I was going to just play a couple of commercials. It uh, kind of represents uh, kind of how we are today. That's all right. Bob and Randy present Ask a Harmon. Today, pharmacy. There's customer service and then there's Harmon's customer service. It's important for us to talk to customers about the prescriptions that they just received because we want to make sure that they're informed when they go out the door. We want to make sure that they have the right medication for the right condition and that they're going to take it correctly when they get home. We're amazing here, so <laughs> just bring your prescriptions over and you'll see that. <laughs> Harmon! 
Walking Party presents Ask a Harmon. Today, meet. Some of the things our customers really like about Harmon's is our superior cuts of meat. We tell them how to cook it. We walk them to an aisle to pick up that special ingredient that will season that really great steak. Unlike other stores, we're cutting meat fresh here every day. It's exceeding the expectation of the customer. So when they walk out that door, they don't want to shop anywhere else. Harmon! We have two more quick ones and I'll stop. Bob and Randy presents Ask a Harmon. Today, produce. Harmon's produce is the freshest. We try to deal with our local distributors to make sure that we're taking advantage of the produce here in Utah. Every morning they pick the product, they bring it straight to us. So it's the very freshest product possible, and it gives our shoppers the longest shelf life in the refrigerator. Why Harvest Produce? One word, freshness. Second word, great quality. Harvin! <laughs> Bob and Randy present Ask a Harmon. Today, delicatessen. Everything in our delicatessen is made from scratch. We use quality ingredients, fresh produce, fresh meats. It makes our food different than any other place. We literally prepare dozens of entrees and salads every day from scratch that are chef prepared. I'm able to use my restaurant knowledge and my culinary background to be creative with the food and have fun. Every time you come in, you'll find something new to love about our delicatessen. Harmon! Bob and Randy present Ask a Harmon. Today, artisan bread. If you're looking for something special to bake, Harmon's is the place. A lot of stores will say, baked fresh daily. Well, here we can honestly say it is made fresh from scratch daily. We don't just pop it in the oven, you know, pull it out of a freezer. We actually mix the flour and the salt and the yeast, and you're getting truly an authentic, made from scratch product. It's what I call bread done right. Harmon! Bread done right. Bob and Randy present. Okay. Well, thank you for your attention. And we